We all know the Cold War was a political, economic, and sometimes military confrontation between the US and the Soviet Union that lasted half a century. One of the largest and most prolific results of the Cold War was a massive buildup of nuclear weapons and systems of all types and sizes to deliver them to their targets. Both nations' governments lived in a state of constant paranoia for decades, afraid the other might launch an attack. As a result, the Soviet Union built what only can be described as the ultimate doomsday machine, a system that would launch a nuclear strike automatically if attacked. The system is called Perimeter, often more commonly referred to in the West as Dead Hand. And from what we know, the system is likely operational still today. The benefits of such a system are clear. During the Cold War, the Soviets were extremely worried the US would launch a very quick decapitation strike against their leadership, making their ability to counter-strike much more difficult. And an automated system that could strike back would theoretically solve that problem. There is very little verified information available on the system. As you can imagine, such a system and the details of how it works would be something Russia would like to keep a secret. We know without a doubt that it does exist. Dozens of people, independent journalists, ex-Soviet officials, and people who helped construct and man the system have talked about it, giving us a general idea of how the system worked. However, some details from different sources contradict each other. This is not necessarily surprising, as again it would have been in the benefit of the Soviet Union and Russia to keep the whole project compartmentalized. Some of the best information available we have comes from a man named David Hoffman, a journalist for the Washington Post. Hoffman spent six years in Moscow after the collapse of the Soviet Union. He spent years talking to sources and researching through tens of thousands of documents he found in the private collection of a man named Vitaly Kalayev, a senior staff member of the Defense Department of the Central Committee of the Soviet Communist Party. After years of research, he wrote a book on the system called The Dead Hand, the untold story of the Cold War arms race and its dangerous legacy. The book later went on to win a Pulitzer Prize. Basically, the system was designed due to the worries that they might not be able to respond fast enough to an American first strike, especially after events such as the 1983 false nuclear alert and Stanislav Petrov disregarding it. Despite Petrov having been right, it still raised concerns in the Soviet leadership at the time, so they developed a series of systems. The first was a communication device called the Chiket for leadership to quickly communicate, similar in a sense to the American nuclear football. They were connected to a system called Kavkaz, which was the relays, wires, uplinks, etc. Then the general staff had a computer system called Boxon, which was used to actually send the launch orders to their nuclear forces. And the final part of this system is called Perimeter, or what we know of as Dead Hand. Despite general belief, Perimeter is not a system that was turned on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It was a backup system designed to be activated in the times of increased tensions to guarantee their ability to launch a counter-strike, even if the Soviet leadership had been destroyed. When the system was active, it took measurements from a series of sensors to detect whether or not a nuclear war had begun. The sensors included size monitors, pressure readings, radiation detectors, and also a system testing whether communications were still up with officials. The system is located deep underground in a hardened bunker to ensure that it would not be destroyed itself. If the system and operators confirmed a nuclear attack had begun and that the leadership had been destroyed, it would order several command rockets, also located in underground hardened silos, to fire. The rockets would fly out across the Soviet Union and emit radio signals to tell Soviet missile sites to launch their ICBMs. That is basically all the Dead Hand system is. A bunker with sensors and a few rockets used to get the message to their nuclear forces to attack. We know a lot about the rockets used. They were the P-15-011 rockets armed with a communication payload called the 15B-99. That much we do know. What we do not know for sure is just how automated the whole system is, and the degree to which humans are involved. As I stated earlier, it is believed to only be turned on during a crisis. That way, in the event a nuclear war does break out, they can ensure their ability to strike back even if the leadership was taken out, if satellites were down, or even if all communication was lost. Three conditions had to be met for the system to activate. First, it needed to be turned on by the Soviet leadership. Second, communication with the command had to be down. And third, the sensors, such as the pressure and seismic, had to detect a nuclear attack had occurred. If all three were found to be true, Hoffman still believes at that point some human involvement came into play, that the operators in the bunkers would still have to give the okay to launch the command rocket, and that it was not completely autonomous. Computer systems at the time, and even today, are not 100% foolproof, so it is doubtful that the system was fully automatic. 
especially considering the false alerts computers gave in incidents such as that of 1983. That is a pretty basic overview of the system and how it works, but I highly recommend that if you'd like to get more in depth and more details, to check out Hoffman's book.